Hello everyone. Happy Monday. Um, <coughs> sorry if I sound sick. Um, I am, but I don't think it's the coronavirus, so don't worry. Um, I finally did my first live trade today, and I was hoping I'd be like some of those other new traders who are like, Hey Tim, look at me. I just had my successful first trade. I made several hundred dollars. Woohoo! I was so looking forward to that. I wanted to be one of those newbies. <laughs> but I kind of figured I wouldn't be, and I wasn't. Not that my plan was too terrible. <clears throat> I was just too early. Oh, pardon me. Um, HTBX is... Well, let's start with COCP since that's the first one that I traded. Um, my, oh, don't mind uh, these arrows. They're in the wrong spots. I don't know why uh, they've been doing that uh, today. With my paper trading, they're pretty on point uh, and in the right spot. But um, my first trade was a morning panic dip buy. That's what I was going for because I analyzed all the charts, all, a whole bunch of different time frames. I saw that it had some new news. Um, there was co-diagnostic up 59% uh, pretty much. Uh, because it had uh, something to do with the coronavirus, and those have been working out lately. But looking into the one minute, one month chart, I noticed that this stock was panicking more times than not at market open. See, there's a morning panic there. It has some red there, so it spiked a bit, and then it panicked. Um, that one had a panic, so more than likely, I figured, based on, I always like to do, um, that's a five day, five day works too, I usually like to have it on the two day, one minute chart, but this works too, you can see there's panic there, panic there, panic there, um, it went all the way down here, and then it bounced a little bit, but uh, every day basically, there's been a morning panic, um, it's a dip buy in too. And so I figured it would be pretty safe to say that today would have been a morning panic dip buy for COCP. And it was, I was just a, a too early. And that's what it came down to. Even though, based off of right here, there is, oh, that's why, uh, there is support right here, which is where it ended up kind of going down to is the bottom down here, but this one I was like, eh, that might be a bit too much, but I wouldn't rule it out because stocks have been uh, doing that. Uh, they can do anything like in penny stock land, but this morning it looked like that might have been where the panic was going to be because I saw that there was support here, and it seemed pretty convincing since it was holding right there. So. Um, I was like, okay, 138, 140, that is going to be the support. And, uh, once it started spiking up to 145, I'm like, okay, this is it. This is the bounce. Time to buy. So I bought at 145. Now, uh, I got two executions because I had a total of like 225 shares, I think it was. Uh, at 145, but it just did in two increments, which a paper train um, does do it similarly. In paper trading, I had it set to partial executions um, and uh, sometimes no fills, so that way I could kind of get used to something like this, but it's still not quite like live trading because it confused me at first. I'm just used to it happening pretty quick. Uh, even though I have delayed or I had delayed set on uh, the paper trading. But uh, anyways, 
It held support right here for quite a while. It I bought at 145. It bounced up to 150-ish, and it even got up to 151. Well, I was looking for 10, um, 15 percent bounce up to around 156, 155 area, um, so that way it would retest uh, the morning highs and I thought it had potential to bounce back up even though it was a little late in the pattern. It just had potential to bounce is what I was going for. It turns out I was a bit too early and it hit 138 and I was like, you know what, I'm going to cut for a small loss. I ended up selling all my shares at 140 which on Trader Sync I typed that in and it turned out to be a, a really good um, Cutting losses quick. Uh, it, I followed rule number one fairly well, and it turned out to be um, a minus three and point four five percent, which was eleven dollars. So I'm glad I'm still good at that. And as you can see, I took another trade. But when, before I get to that, uh, you'll see that COCP ended up going to this support, and it would have been a nice buy if you got near the bottom at one nineteen and it bounced up to 137. So I was on the right track as Tim says, but I was just too early. Typical. <laughs> um, so let's get on to my second trade. In the second trade, I um, went back in history, I found my support and my resistance levels, and I always like to mark those out. Regardless of whether or not I'm going to trade it, it shows that I've looked at this stock before, I've come up with a plan, and there's some possibilities there, and that's how I know that I've seen this stock before. So, I like to go to the six-month chart just to get a quick idea of the trend. I saw it was the first green day, had some volume right here on Friday, and I was like, okay, well, more than likely, the first green days have been back in play, it seems like, especially with this new craze of the corona, or, well, it's not a new craze, it's been going on for a little while now, but with the coronavirus happening, and with it spreading to Washington, and hearing about everyone swarming the stores, I was like, okay, well, this play's not over yet, and so I saw the first green day, saw it had unusual volume, it broke out um, above this resistance, uh, and it had room to go up here, or even to right here, which is where the general area of where the first green day in, uh, had spiked to. Then I went to those other charts, I put my other potentials where it could go. If it broke out above this, it could go to here. If it broke out there, it could go to here, and so on. And it turned out to go all the way up to here today. So I thought it was going to have a morning spike above pre-market highs. Or, yeah, it started spiking pre-market here. So I figured it would have a little bit of consolidation turning into the flag pattern. And it was going to spike up again. Since that's been pretty popular lately. But I got an alert um, in Tim's chat room that he was dip buying it and he bought it at 0.49. It's like, gosh darn it. So if you're dip buying this, that means it's probably not going to spike out very much and it's breakouts that you want to have patience for from a video I remembered and in dip buying you want to take profits quickly. So I was like, crap. I'm just going to watch this then because I don't like buying stocks that Tim's in just because of the fact, like, yes, I'm on the right path, I'm watching the same stock, I have my plan for it, but then I start wanting to trade off of what he's thinking, even though there's multiple ways um, to trade all these stocks. You don't have to listen to him, that he's not recommending you listen to him, whatsoever. But it's a little psycho psychology thing that kind of messes with my head a little bit. And so it's like, fine, I'm just going to watch this stock go without me. Let's see if it even does anything. So, it dipped. My goal was to buy it when it broke out at um, 0.456. That was my goal. And it's like, here, he's in, in the 4.9s. I'm like, well, shoot, now if I get in at 0.456, 
the, the play's gonna be over because it's now a dip buy instead of a spike. It's like, gosh darn it, I don't know what to do here. So I watched it. And <coughs> he took his profits, and it was a good ga gain. Congratulations for your single. Um, and then it started holding up near its highs. So, what I do? Oh, something stupid, but not stupid at the same time. I was just a little off. Uh, when I first started paper trading, I'd buy the tops and end up having to sell. Well, that's what this felt like, because I bought right here, um, at point zero six one, I think it was. Let me check Trader Sync. Yeah, I bought at point six one nine four, and I had a couple hundred shares. Um, and my goal was to sell. Yeah, I'll just click on it real quick. So I got 200 shares at uh, 0.6194, and based on my target price, 10%, uh, I'd be selling at 0.68. So I thought it was going to break out. That's what it came out to. I thought this was holding very nicely, so it's going to continue spiking like we've been having. Well, what does it do? It goes down. So I cut my losses as quick as I, I could, and I ended up cutting my losses at... Uh, 0.57, which isn't my ideal uh, cutting losses quickly per se. I like to keep it less than 5% or around 5%, and this ended up being 7.98% uh, right here. And it's still not bad. I can make that up. It's just, it is what it is. But then when I looked back at this chart, it's like, gosh darn it. it, I was on the right track, it did break out. And actually, it went up to uh, 0.879 with a, over 137% uh, gain. So, it's not like it was necessarily a bad trade, I was just really early. And, well, why didn't I just wait and watch it down here and buy the breakout? Uh, I have trouble buying breakouts during the afternoons um, because I'm, quite frankly, I'm with my kid. I've been fortunate to get him on a schedule where typically he'll wake up between, uh, on a bad day, 6.30 when the market opens, uh, my time, which is 9.30 Eastern, um, or around 8.30 my time, which is 11.30 Eastern, sorry, I'm really bad at math. Uh, 8.30 my time would be a good time for him to wake up because usually my trades are done. But all during the afternoons, not only are the markets slow, but that's my time to get homework done, I'm cleaning, I'm uh, just, I'm, I'm doing, I'm adulting during that time. Uh, so, as much as I want to be here for the breakouts, I simply, that's not necessarily time that I can. But I have my alarm set for 11.45 um, my time, which 11.45, 11.45, so 1.45, so 2.45 uh, Eastern, so I can be here for nearly the last hour or so of the market. And I saw that it broke out. And it's like, man, I'm proud of myself for being on the right track, but I was just too early. But I'm so thankful for cutting my losses because it went down to the four twos. And I'm not going to stick around for that. And finally, as it came to the close, I saw over here on new highs that, excuse me, uh, Fannie Mae was spiking. It was right over here. There, um, and it was making new highs. So I was like, okay. Well, that's a big morning spike. It's been climbing high. It's a pretty slow stock. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's a slow stock, and it has a billion float. Not my ideal um, kind of play, but I remember all these videos of Tim McGrattani making, I think, his $100,000 or $200,000 profits on Fannie Mae, and other people have 
uh, profited from Fannie Mae. So why not try it? And it is closing near its highs. It had another breakout. I was originally trying to get in at 285, but it kept kind of grinding away. I was watching it for a little bit. And it's like, ah, oh, should I get it? Should I not get it? Should I get it? Should I not get it? And it's like, dang, this will be my third trade for just today. And I have the whole week to go. I was like, ah, I'd feel guilty if I missed it. So I ended up chasing it uh, about five cents. And it's like, well, Tim says a couple cents doesn't necessarily make a difference if you're on the right track. So I bought right here uh, 2908. I believe it was. Um, yep, 2908. And I have 100 shares. Yep. And it's an OTC stock, so I do pay commissions on this, which is something I figured I'd try to. And when looking at this, I went to the six month chart because that's the first thing I go to. I saw it's the first green day. It has some volume, it's not too unusual like it was over here, um, but it was enough for it to spike. And looking at this chart, if you have a first green day, it tends to have a second green day. There's a first green day, um, I guess you could consider that a first green day, but then there's another green day, there's a green day right here, a green day right here. There's a lot of green days, and so I figure... Um, this stock has potential to break out over 297 uh, tomorrow, and it could potentially go to uh, 314 or around there, um, and it could go higher since it's penny stocks. Who the hell knows what's going to happen? Um, but I figure it's safe to say that it's going to have a second green day tomorrow. And... I am up a little bit already, and I'm holding it till tomorrow, um, and so that's how my first trading day has gone so far. You can see over here, my profit and loss, it says minus $9.68, I think that's because of commissions. I'm still learning this whole live trading thing, but I have been getting a couple questions um, that I'll answer in just a second. I want to bring up... TOMZ because this stock was going to be the first stock that I, um, I was going to uh, buy trade with, but I was a little bit too late and I was going to buy it right here over the breakout. And as you can see, it's just skyrocketed. So, watching stuff like this, this was my last paper, no, this wasn't my last paper trade, it was going to be my first live trade. And seeing how well this one's performed, and I saw Trill. Back when it was, like, a, or right here actually is when I bought Trail, and now it went all the way up to almost $8. I'm like, okay, I have some winners sometimes as long as I can hold them. And so, that's kind of my idea with Fannie Mae. That's my thinking. Okay, I've been getting a few questions. Sorry, not my phone. It's, I wrote them down. And Jesse Boy BJ1 asked me if I am looking for swing trades or day trades. Um, I am doing day trades and overnight plays, which is, I believe, still considered day trading. Um, I don't know how to swing trade yet. I want to master um, one category at a time, I suppose you could say. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so I don't swing trade right now, but it will be something I look forward to in the future once I've made plenty from day trading. And then Court Dryden uh, asked me, how are your emotions now that you are trading for real and not paper trading? Well, my goal from the very beginning was taking paper trading as seriously as possible to get me prepared for live trading. And so I was really nervous when I first started paper trading, but I didn't have the experience. Um, so I just practiced what I did, or what I would, um, what I learned from Tim's YouTube videos or video lessons. 
it's easy. And I'm sure a lot of you have felt this way where you get really excited, really nervous. It's like, oh, you're sweating. You're kind of just like, oh my goodness, antsy. Well, that's kind of how I was today. It's like, oh, I really don't want to lose. I want to make Tim proud. I want to get a single. It's my first live trade. Uh, all these people have been watching me uh, be or grow and be more successful with paper trading. I want to maintain that. I want to still be someone that I can look up to, that I can feel confident with. I can brag to Tim and be like, hey Tim, yay, I made it. I have my first positive trade. And you be like, see, all this studying, all this paper trading has paid off. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I felt a lot of pressure. And lo and behold, I lost. <laughs> but I was on the right track and I did cut my losses as quickly as I could. Not to mention that I had to switch between E-Trade and Stocks to Trade because there was something about my dates not lining up and so I had to keep changing the dates and then seeing the fills get ordered differently than what paper train does just by a little bit. It's like, oh goodness. And then my kid waking up and cr climbing all over me trying to hit my laptop. It's like, ah, what are you doing? And kind of roll him over, holding him down, pinning him, trying to trade. <laughs> it was just, it was a good thing to get out of the way. So it was exciting, not to mention I'm sick, so everything, it feels like menopause in here, and it's really hot, and so here I'm just sweating, trading, and just laughing, and not feeling well, and it's like, oh my goodness, and now I got that out of the way. I'm not afraid of losing, I can cut my losses quickly, um, the only thing that I'm uh, uh, figuring out now is, like, after I traded, as you guys probably noticed right here, it says that I have $2,252 left. That confused the crap out of me. I guess I should probably delete this because I don't want to get any more, more trades right now. I have this thing where I have to uh, delete that now because of past experiences where um, uh, it just automatically filled and I don't want that. Oh, I guess if I move the thing over, that thing goes away. Oops, didn't know that, sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah. It says that, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Um, she left my hair blonde. <laughs> 2,252. I started out with 3,000, and then now it says that I have 2,252, which I just read something about, um, or watched a video where Tim's thing is under uh, the free ride rule or something from 2016 and it said that it takes a few days for everything to clear through your broker or something like that and so I tried calling them but I couldn't figure out the call thing and typing in the stuff because uh -uh. uh, their typing thing wasn't working so it still says that I have like 2,900 and something available, but it has that, I don't know. I'm just watching for the next few days to see why it's like that. And so, I know about that. Um, but yeah, that's how it feels for me trading live for my first time versus paper trading the first time, which I wasn't sick for, and I didn't have as experienced. And my first paper trade was CETX, and I was writing it down because I didn't, I couldn't figure out how to even do the paper trading on stocks to trade. Um, so I was in at one price, it was CETX on the 28th of June, I believe it was, where it just skyrocketed. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take all these profits and then write it down and say, okay, I'm out here. And it was like a 219 or something profit. So I was just all happy and thinking that's how today was going to be too, hoping. Um, but no, it wasn't like that. And then, okay, so, uh, so, the other questions are like personal messages that people have been asking me. Uh, how do I find first green days? Is it any day after a red day? 
Well, no, it's not any day after a red day. I, I was wondering the same thing when I first heard Tim say that. Um, oh, for well, the first green day is, is something with unusual volume. Like, you have a red day, and then it's a big green candlestick. Big green candlestick. Yes, these are technically first green days because they're green after a red day, but it's a big candlestick, unusual volume. Uh, unusual volume meaning that it's uh, above the usual volume. So, like this is um, what I would consider a first green day. Excuse me, because it's bigger than those green days and above this volume. It's not like this green day over here. But, it's, a, it's kind of unusual. So, it's not an exact science, is what Tim says. <laughs> but, that's what I look for. And, if you track your trades, and just watch the trades, oh, wrong button, uh, you'll get a feel for it. Plus, after enough video lessons, you'll see it too. <laughs> and, um, why did I choose to buy these stocks? I went over that a little bit. Um, I thought they were going to break out and spike, or and the other one I thought was going to dip by, and then this stock, I'm hoping for a spike uh, tomorrow morning, since it was closing near its highs on the first green day. And how do I track my trades? I... I'm so thankful. Yes, uh, for those of you wondering, I still use Profitly. I love Profitly. Um, I like to stay transparent. Tim can see it. You guys can all see it. Test lamping on Profitly. Um, test lamping on Twitter. Um, but I use Trader Sync. And I'll have a link below. Um, or if you go to my blog, testlamping.com, you'll see I have Trader Sync all over that too. Um, but it's Trader Sync, and I go to the dashboard, I add my trades, I like to insert them manually as I'm trading, because when I do that, I can see my trade, see how this is open, um, I can check out my target percent, this is 10%, 20%, 30%, where I know when to take profits or have an idea of where I'd like to take my profits. And then here for um, 5%, 10%, 8% um, to know or gain an idea of where to cut my losses. And then for tags, I can do my setup, which would be um, first green day. And so there, mistakes. Well, I don't think I've made any yet. And the chart's still going up, so it's not a complete chart yet. Then when the trade's over, I can do a screenshot notes. Uh, first green day closing near, near its highs. Uh, semi unusual volume. Yeah, I'll fix the spelling errors later. I suppose. Oh, that's still on. Oh, well. I'll fix it. Oh, um, yeah. That just looks funny. Um, uh, so first green day closing near its highest, semi unusual volume. Um, potential breakout. And then I'll go over it later. But that's kind of all oh, what I do in my uh, trading journal, which I recommend everyone have. I have the Elite version, which gives me everything. I absolutely love this thing. I'm sorry I don't sound even more enthusiastic about it. I'm just not feeling well, and it kind of hurts to talk. But yes, I everyone has to add Trader Sync. Um, that's how I track my trades, and it even has profit charts and other things down below or however you have yours set up because you can uh, customize them and then how do you know when to cut losses well Tim says cut losses quickly um, 
another way to know exactly when because it's like well do I do it right when it goes against me or do I wait just a little bit Tim Gritani cuts them intelligently um, like how do I do that well I like to type in my trade I set my target which you can edit um, Let's see. Trade settings. Yep, you go to trade settings. Split when possible, and then here you go. Target stop losses. Active. Uh, activate default target stop losses. Yes. I like preset percentages. I have my target for 10%, 20%, and 30%. So that way, I'm not getting greedy. I have it to 5%, 6%, 8%, um, which I probably should turn to uh, probably 3, 5, and 8. And then apply, and overwrite, save, and then you can do it for stocks, sports, crypto, futures, and options. I don't do those, but that is how I decide how to cut my losses. And then you'll see here, it's now um, three, uh, three nineteen. That's the same. Uh, Two dollars and eighty-two cents is when I would cut my losses um, for only an eight-dollar loss. Uh, Two seventy-six for fourteen. Two sixty-seven for a twenty-three-dollar loss. And that is simply how I like to calculate cutting my losses quickly. The trader sync does the math for me, um, and it makes me feel very safe. So, thank you guys for all your questions. I hope this um, answered um, all the questions you guys have been asking me on Twitter. I um, will try and go through and do a review every. Uh, after every one of my trades if I can. Sorry I don't feel well. Sorry it's a really long video. Um, I hope you guys had a happy Monday and stay safe out there. Thank you and see you next time. Oh, make sure to subscribe. Um, follow me on Twitter, Profitly. I have an Instagram. But ring the bell so you get notified when I make another video. See you guys. Oh, wrong button. Sorry.